Okay, now I remember. We got to do this. Magnetic field into the board. A uniform magnetic field. We're not going to change that. We could make the field non-uniform, but then we would have to do vector calculus. We don't want to do that. What we need is that bar like that. And then we need it to be on kind of a frame. Uh oh. Like this. I just ushered myself. Here we go. Okay. Like this. So this is a stationary frame. And it's like it's metal, you know, it's a conductor. And this is a sliding bar. Right there. So now only one part of the loop can move. This we'll say is the x-axis like that, and we'll call this uh, the origin when it first, uh, we'll call that zero, it's starting at, at zero, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is move just this bar. And let's see what happens. Let's think, um, when this bar moves, its free electrons are gonna feel a force. V cross B is up, but they're electrons, so they're gonna go down. So these electrons go over here. And that leaves positively uncharged nuclei up there. This has lots of free electrons and they're happy to move around, but they're not being pushed by anyone because they're not moving. So they say, oh, we'll go over here. Those electrons take off on a journey to go meet these electrons and cover those up. But then they make these, they push these over here and they go around and you have a loop. Okay. I'm sorry, then you have an EMF. Current flows around the loop like that because you're constantly pushing your electrons down but they can constantly go around the loop where there's no force and get back. So we have finally succeeded in making a current. We have made an EMF by only allowing one piece to change. And even better, even better, because we have a change in the flux. Right. Now the area is changing, magnetic field is constant, <coughs> but our area is getting bigger. So B dot A is increasing or decreasing depending on which way you call positive. But basically if this doesn't change, you make an EMF. So with motional EMF, sometimes you can actually analyze it and see it just with uh, the Lorentz force. It doesn't mean that you don't need Faraday's law, that doesn't exist, it just means Faraday's law always works out. And if it's motional, you can get it from the Lorentz force, okay? So there really is just sort of one Faraday's law. It's just when you do motional, it, it looks different. But the point is, both, both laws always work. They both end up being true. Let's analyze it a little bit more carefully. Let's see what phi b is. Uh, phi b, let's see, that's b dot da, that's the b field times the area. So the b field will just say is constant into the board, whatever, its magnitude is b. And the area, we'll say is L, which is the length of the rod, or the length between the two rails, uh, times how far it goes here in X. Right? So we could put the origin here and say it's already at X, it already has some area, it doesn't matter. So BLX, okay, let's do that. There you go, <laughs> it's X, back to whatever. Okay, so phi B is BLX, and we wanna say that um, the EMF is minus d phi b dt. So the EMF is minus, and the derivative of b and l are constant, so it's minus b lv. So with a combination of Faraday's law and the, um, and just by looking at the geometry, we can figure out how much current, or the EMF induced is blv, and if we wanted the current induced, we would just need to know the resistance, uh, uh, yeah, over R. So there you go, motional EMF is often sort of a combination, or it often requires you to think about the Lorentz force to, to see it.